Let's just sell my little black book. It's going to be all animals all the time. Black book? Yeah, keys to the kingdom. You know, you call me up. You're looking for a someone. Keep all my someones in here. Okay, I see it. Knock yourself out. Hey guys, Q here, warning of spoilers for Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul up to Season 6, Episode 6. In this video, I'll be breaking down discussing Caldera's criminal contact book that he gave Jimmy in Better Call Saul, Episode 606, which we also saw in the 601 Breaking Bad Flash Forward. Caldera's contact book has been completely decoded, or well, mostly, so let's discuss everything that we know. Also, look out for an Ed the Disappear video later on today discussing how Jimmy got Ed's contact, since both of these topics are from the same scene in 606, along with the significance that Ed's card may have in the story. I was originally going to discuss both of these topics in the same video, but decided to split up the two topics into different discussions, as there's just so many Caldera contacts to discuss. Like the video if you end up enjoying it, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter for more Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad updates. If you really enjoy what I do here, maybe even consider checking out my Patreon, or give back to the channel by clicking the super thanks button under the video. With that being said, let's jump into the breakdown. Show me. So Caldera is many people's introduction to the criminal world in Albuquerque. He first helped Mike find work when he moved to Albuquerque, and he even introduced Jimmy to Huel. He's the reason we saw Steven Oggs on the show, and he even saved Nacho's life back in Season 4. In Episode 606, Jimmy brings Kim to see Caldera for the first time. On one hand, it's kind of surprising that Jimmy would bring Kim to see him, but on the other hand, after everything they've been through recently, especially near the end of Season 5, Kim has definitely earned it. So the initial reason why they're going going to see Caldera is to get drugs that dilate pupils to make you look high as hell, but there's more to it than that. Caldera says he's retiring, and that being a vet is his passion while being a criminal worker isn't. After I walk out of here, I never want to see you again. Never. This cartel shit is too hot for me. He gives Jimmy and Kim his coded black contact book, which is the same book that we saw in the episode 601 Breaking Bad flash forward to Saul Goodman's house. And in regards to seeing the book in 601, I just find it hilarious that they throw it in the no value box alongside the TY beanie that Saul tried giving to the receptionist at the courthouse, along with some stress balls that might be from season 4. The balls that Jimmy was bouncing around when he was working at that phone store. Obviously we know that this contact book has great value, so it's hilarious that they put it in the no value box, like they're obviously just overlooking it, and I'm surprised that they didn't bring it to police or something else for more analysis. While Jimmy and Kim are looking through the book, they find Ed the Disappear's card, but first I want to break down who's actually in Caldera's book. See back in episode 601, we saw Caldera's book with a few open pages, so it's actually been decoded since episodes 601 and 602. I could have done a video for it way back then, but I wanted to wait until it was revealed in the Better Call Saul timeline. Line. Thank you to Asur and Fish on Reddit for decoding the book. He actually messaged me on Twitter linking me to his post just after the season 6 double premiere. He's made multiple posts since then decoding the pages of this book, so let's first start from the beginning and break down his thoughts on the book, then go down the list of Caldera's criminal contacts. I'll be linking his Reddit posts in the description as well. So he says that some of the information is blurry and can't be read at all, even with high-res images. Some other information is completely blocked by fingers and so on. He was able to start deciphering the phone numbers based off of Nacho's phone number from earlier seasons, as well as Albuquerque's zip code. Other than Nacho's number, all of them are invalid and fake numbers that start with zero. Nacho's number leads to a voicemail, but it's from season one, and we already know about it. There's also symbols that indicate skills held by the individuals in the notebook, and Roman numerals that may indicate either a skill level or number of times they've been hired or recommended for a job. So first, Fish made a text file in regards to all of his findings, but later posted a photo of his decoding work along with the entire decoded alphabet well aside from a few letters. This is absolutely wild, great job Fish. We see familiar contacts such as Huel and Kubi, who are Saul Goodman's right hand men from Breaking Bad. We've already seen Huel on Better Call Saul a bunch, and we would have seen Kubi too if Bill Burr wasn't so busy with work. I love Bill Burr, but I don't know if we'll see him this season, I hope we do, but there's no guarantee. On one hand, you could see this as foreshadowing or confirmation that we will see him, but on the other hand, it could just be a 
subtle nod to the character, implying how Jimmy will hire him between the two shows. Let me know if you think we'll see QB this season in Better Call Saul. There's someone called Aro who's apparently in jail until November 2004. Currently, as of Better Call Saul 606, it's around May to June of 2004, so who knows if we'll see November, but if we do, watch out for some sort of recently released criminal contact. There's someone called L. Cuddy, a separate contact from QB, and we don't know much about this Cuddy person other than the fact that they were arrested and released. There's also someone called Millie Dawn from Crandock. Fish did some searching around and found that there's a Crandock Marine Bank, which Mike and his men laundered money through in Breaking Bad Season 5, along with Crandock Marine Bank being the bank that's written on Jimmy and Kim's check that they got for conning someone in an earlier season. I believe the check is the same check that they wrote Ice Station Zebra on. The next page to Caldera's book, we have Nacho as a contact, although his name's been crossed out. This was subtle foreshadowing to Nacho's death back in 601 before he saw his death in 603. We all knew Nacho was gonna die, so it's not that much of a surprise. The surprise was how soon it happened in the season. So this is possibly confirmation on how Jimmy learns that Nacho is in fact dead, once he learns how to decode the book, that is. Nacho's phone number does work and you can call it, but as we mentioned earlier in the video, it's just his season 1 voicemail where he says, Nacho, leave it. I'll be focusing on that more in a future video where I call other Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul phone numbers as well as I have a whole series on my channel doing that. Moving on, there's a contact called Henry Cho, the last name's cut off might be Henry Chow, I don't know, but he's apparently a bilingual Korean who apparently works for Prince Limousine. There's a contact called Daryl Pearl, with not much info on him other than the fact that people have possibly sent complaints about him to Caldera. There's a contact called Mitch Garrison, who's from the APD, the Albuquerque Police Department. Could this be a dirty cop that agrees to help criminals? I'd like to see just how corrupt he is, but we'll see. There's also Neil Page, whose job is in Metalworks. Could this be the Neil Candy that we all know and hate from El Camino? As you may know, Neil Candy is the welder that created Jesse's restraints while being held captive by Todd and Jack, and Neil Candy ends up becoming the main antagonist in El Camino at his workplace, Candy Welding. We see Clarence as a contact who's Mountain Man from Better Call Saul Season 1 Episode 9 Pimento, the guy who got hired for Price but then runs away scared after Mike beats up Steven Oggs and steals his gun. Mountain Man was already hired by Jimmy in Better Call Saul Season 4 during the pinata of it all, alongside Hewell to deal with the people that mug Jimmy while selling burner phones on the street. Mountain Man is also seen as a background character selling churros while Jimmy sells more burner phones in the season 5 premiere. Not only that, but Mountain Man also appears in El Camino as the bouncer slash pimp for the sex workers that got hired to go to Candy Welding. Funny how everything comes full circle in this universe. So another contact name is Steven Pierce, who owns his own auto body shop. I assume this is where criminals can bring damaged or stolen cars to get fixed up and changed visually to hide from the cops, kind of making me think of the auto body shops in the Grand Theft Auto game. Another contact is Mr. X, who we know is played by Steven Oggs. He's the one that Mike beat up in my favorite season 1 scene from Pimento, and Mr. X made another cameo in season 5 hired by Jimmy and Kim to try and find dirt on Kevin from Mesa Verde. Fun fact, the show creators originally wanted Bill Burr as QB in season 5, but when Bill Burr was too busy to be on the show, they chose Steven Oggs to return instead. I really love Steven Oggs, so I don't mind that switch at all to be honest. The next contact is Genevieve from Overwood Avenue, and it says no Russians, which reminds me of the famous mission from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the campaign, although that's definitely unintentional, that's just my own mind wandering. So Genevieve can also be possibly translated to Jean Lives, which may be a Bravo Vince moment, but we'll have to wait and see if that's intentional or not. The next contact is someone called Four Finger Man, who presumably has a hand with four fingers, or is that code for the type of work he does? I'm not too sure. Finally, we have Lawson as a contact, who is the guns dealer that we've seen Mike deal with in Better Call Saul while buying his sniper back in Season 2, along with the guns dealer who sells Walt his 38 snub pistol in Breaking Bad, and even the heavy machine gun in the trunk in Season 5. So those are all the contacts that were revealed in Episode 601 during the intro flash forward to Saul's house, but as of Episode 606, more pages have been shown on screen, leading to our main man Fish being able to decode even more contacts. The first is Tony Petrona, who who Fish originally thought was from Berlin, but then writes down in his notes that the word apparently isn't Berlin, as the last letter isn't an N. The Tony Petrona person apparently only speaks English. The next contact is Freddie Marks, who is apparently off on weekends. More contacts go by the name of Karen Dubious, and then Peanut Butter, which is a hilarious criminal nickname, and then Sandra Carroll. These three don't have any additional info other than their names currently, but if Fish or anyone else manages to decode more about them, I'll mention it in a future video, and also add a pinned comment to the top of the comments section of this video. The next contact is someone called 
Marie Amarov, who works at Rapid Collections, which may be a deck collection business in Albuquerque. Another contact is Queen A, who works at Aero Motel. Upon a simple Google search, I didn't find an Aero Motel in Albuquerque, but what did pop up was Bow and Arrow Lodge. I'm not sure if they're related. The next contact is Maya Galgas from Prim, Nevada, but their name is crossed out the same as Nachos. Is this person dead or just retired from the game, so to speak? Also, whenever I hear the town Prim, I just think of Fallout New Vegas, but I digress. Finally, there's Dr. Leo Hansen, who may be another criminal doctor to help criminals with injuries they sustain during legal work, aka something you wouldn't want to go to the hospital for. That's all the contacts from Fish's images, but in a recent post, he named off a few more, first with Paleo from Chihuahua, Mexico, that apparently wants high-end work only. There's also Francisco Fernandez and Dr. George Peng. Not much info on them, but I assume George Peng is another criminal doctor similar to Leo Hansen that we just discussed moments ago. And then finally, there's Corey Hager, who's apparently out of the country. So none of these new contact reveals are anyone that we've seen currently up to this point in Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, or El Camino, but it's always possible that they may appear sometime during the rest of Better Call Saul Season 6, or even in a future show or Netflix movie, so keep an eye out. Fish refrained from sharing most of their full phone numbers, since apparently he says none of them are real and don't work. I would have liked to get another famous Breaking Bad Better Call Saul phone number easter egg, but I guess not, at least for now. Again, if there's any updates to these contacts, I'll post it in an update pinned comment on this video, and thank you so much for Sir and Fish for decoding all of this. I'll be linking Fish's Reddit posts in the description as well. So with all of that out of the way, I'll be instantly jumping into my Ed the Disappear video that I'll be releasing later today. Check back on the channel soon for that, but also let me know what you think of Caldera's contact book along with all the contacts we just discussed. If you have any more information on the contact book, feel free to leave it in the comments, and as I said, I'll be updating information in a pinned comment if need be. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, and if you're new to the channel or just haven't yet already, subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on when I post new content on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Check out my Patreon or give a super thanks to help support the channel financially. If you got a few spare bucks lying around, it'd mean a lot, and also thanks to those who have already. But most importantly, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. I cannot wait to be done with all of this. It's gonna feel like, you know, two Red Bulls on an empty stomach.